must be right no hope that we're gonna make it out alive. It was very bad. I am trying to understand why people would shoot to kill young men who are unarmed. We were afraid all the time. The small kingdom of Eswatini in southern Africa, previously known as Swaziland, has recently been rocked by a series of protests that turned violent. It followed a ban on the delivery of citizens' petitions, which called for the king's powers to be diluted. King Swati III is Africa's last remaining absolute monarch and has ruled the country for over 30 years. His opponents say he enjoys a lavish lifestyle, while the majority of his people live in poverty. We haven't been able to enter the country. So far, our application for accreditation has been ignored. But the footage that's emerged despite the internet shutdown tells a story of intimidation and excessive use of force by the police and the military. Anger has been boiling over since June when protesters took to the streets demanding reforms. Authorities cracked down hard, often using live ammunition. Officially, 27 people were killed. Some say that number is higher. This is how we like to remember him. Always so joyful and smiling. They say there were cops there and there were shots fired. The postmortem confirmed that it was a gun shot through the lungs, into the lungs, through his heart. I'm mad because I am trying to understand why, why people would shoot to kill young men who are unarmed. For what reason? The BBC has been speaking to people across Eswatini with similar harrowing stories to tell of excessive violence by security forces. And this boy is just 14. He was also shot in the back. His mother says he may never walk again. Asam to Bulile Angabe Asam Naga and Anomasam to Bulile Ametuga Wabalega Umfana Asabalegi Umfana or Tolong Labama Labam Tola and Deleni Asawile Akalang Emanti Bam Nazi Sagemanti Wakamuga and Adomia Babegalong Fundis, Wam Tatawayum Faga Espelted. It is a combination of people protecting themselves. It is a combination of our security forces responding, um, uh, you know, in like manner to quell and bring uh, security to 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 Eswatini. It is not uh, ordinary people being targeted by the police uh, as it has been depicted. The government clampdown has also extended to journalists. Some of them were tortured. Hey guys. How are you doing now? Oh, yeah. Fine, fine. Are you recovered? Yeah, we're trying. We're uh, getting there. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Physically, but mentally, maybe not. Yeah. I got some snaps using my cell phone. Magnificent got some pictures uh, using his camera. But then a soldier jam, you know, jumped out of nowhere you know, and uh, ordered, ordered us to come over. You know. And then he wanted to know, why are you taking pictures here? Don't you know that it's illegal to be just taking pictures of this? But we told them that we were journalists and they didn't seem to care. I mean, they were strangling me, like holding me by my throat and then pulling me down. And then others were, were punching me, of course, in my ribs. And then and then they, 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 they closed my face. And, and then I saw another plastic coming. So now you can't breathe. You can't talk, you can't say anything, and then it keeps telling you that you, they want you to talk. Did you think you were going to die? <sighs> for, for me, I, I must be honest, I had no hope that we were going to make it out of life. It was very bad. 
Throughout the events of the last few weeks, the king has remained silent. The current calm on the streets hides the deep frustration amongst the people and anger at how they have been treated.